There's nothing Hundley loved more than a clean lobby. He only wished that monkey felt the same way. Oh, sorry about that, Hundley. Is that all of it? It's not even half of it. Ah, 301's doorbell is stuck again. Don't worry, Hundley will show you to the basement. Great. George, I'll go upstairs for more boxes. Why don't you and Hundley find a spot for them? Hundley decided to find a place for Georgia's stuff. <laughs> it occurred to Hundley that this was the first time he'd been in the basement by himself. <laughs> now, where did that ball go? <laughs> A good lobby dog is fearless. <laughs> George was right. You should save everything, because you never know when you might need it. <laughs> to help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. George played the recording and listened closely. <laughs> now they knew the noise was coming from the part of the basement near the boxes. No, after you. <gasps> Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. Cow. <laughs> Yeah, Mo. Aw, Hundley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Woo! Well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! <laughs> 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 
The cave was like a new playground for George. With just a flashlight, he could bring shadows to life. And turn himself into a fearless giant. Suddenly, the cave seemed very different. <laughs> For the very first time, George was truly afraid of the dark. George? Show me the monsters. <laughs> but those aren't monsters. You see? Uh -huh. They're the same things in the dark as they are in the light. <laughs> Your imagination got the best of you, George. But you know what? I have something to make you feel better. Your own personal nightlight. Now you'll never be afraid in the dark. Ooh. <laughs> All right, good night, George. Still no electricity, George. Huh? Yep, that last big storm knocked it out for four whole days. <gasps> but don't worry, I know my flashlight is around here somewhere. <gasps> George knew he had to get that flashlight back if he wanted to sleep tonight. was right. The only scary things in the dark were in George's imagination. <laughs> that night, the power was restored. But George almost wished it was still out. <laughs> and so, after a day of spooky shadows and strange shapes and sounds, George found that he never felt so at home as he did right then, in the dark. Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow. 
How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybikas was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Vesame. Ah. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Haul wind, coxswain. Oh. oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old-time captain? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. <laughs> Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. <laughs> no one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. No? The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because of... Uh... Well, you know, that's that's what pirates do. But the most undignified thing wasn't putting Captain Hundley in his own brig. It was this. Who are you? <coughs> <laughs> I like you already. <coughs> Come on out and have fun with us. <coughs> George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. <laughs> then George got an idea about how he could really help Captain Hundley. Are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water. Sinking. We, we, we got to get back to our own ship. <laughs> Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! George! <laughs> hey, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. the last place you saw it. Here. You see, I go to hand out the menus, I hear a noise, I come back, and poof! Like that, the cookbook. She's vanished. Oh, 
And without it... <laughs> You're ruined? Nah, but dessert sure is. <laughs> I don't know how to make the topping for my blueberry surprise without it. It has to be around here somewhere. Detective Know-It-All, I'm Goody Two-Shoes. I've called you because my most precious book has gone missing. Huh? Ooh. George was in luck. The movie was about a missing book, too. <laughs> but he was wishing he'd taken his nap. Missing, eh? of water will do. See? The rounded sides combined with the water make things big, just like my magnifying glass. Marvelous! <laughs> Maybe George could use a vase to inspect his own crime scene. That doctor on his toes. No spill got past him. What do you see, detective? Detective? We're here. <laughs> You've got your work cut out for you this time, Detective Needs to Know. Detective George Needs to Know wasn't worried. <laughs> With his trusty assistant, Dr. Hundley Dachshund, by his side, he was certain to solve the case. <laughs> oh, no. Detective Needs to Know had left his magnifying glass at home. Uh -huh. Luckily, he found something that just might work. <laughs> Luckily, there was plenty of water nearby. just had to squeeze a bit to make it round like the vase. <laughs> now Detective Needs to Know could look for clues. Yoki's tongue is blue. She must have eaten the blueberries. <laughs> yeah, look at that. There's blueberries spilled all over the countertop. <laughs> George had it. He never does this at home. Ah! My recipe book! <laughs> Yogi, you must have knocked it into my blueberry surprise when you were sneaking blueberries, huh? Thank you, Detective Giorgio. You are the greatest detective ever! <laughs> ah!